What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the media screen inside of the 2021 Ford Escape S. This is the base model, so entry level Escape, so it's got that smaller 4 inch media screen. Not too much to it, so let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what's going on with that media screen. Next up, let's take a peek at the media screen. So this is going to be very straightforward. This is because there's not a ton of stuff to the screen itself. So this is where we're actually going to go to get our presets there. So as you can see, we're jumping between different presets. So in order to be able to set a preset up, it's actually really straightforward. Literally, all we're going to do is tune to whatever station we want to. So we can tune this way or we can tune using our voice. Once you've got the station that you want to be able to save, all you're going to do is press one of these buttons. You press and hold it. And as you can see, it's now saved it as a preset. So we move to one of the other options, back to our preset, and it saved it for us. Moving down, we've got our volume rocker. So very, very straightforward there. We can tune this way. We can also press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to tune using our voice instead. Then we can cancel it using that back button along the very bottom there. Looking along the top, we can change between our sources, so AM, FM, etc and then push in OK. There we go. We can also press the OK button there. So as we're jump, kind of jumping between different things, we can move up and down this way if we want to go that route. And then again, as I mentioned, all we're going to do is just press the OK button or just give it a second and it'll eventually time out as well. Looking at that, we've got our Bluetooth as well, so we can easily set up Bluetooth on our phone. And that's one thing to note is that we can set up Bluetooth for phone calls, and that's it. We don't have the flexibility to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay inside of this, but if you want to at least make phone calls, we can easily do that. So on your phone, all you're going to do is make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. Okay, and we're going to make sure we add a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so we're just waiting for Ford Escape to show up along the bottom, so we're just going to press Ford Escape. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. So we want to make sure these match up, and they do, so we're going to hit pair and yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? For yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay. So as you can see, I am now connected. Now, a few other things that I want to make sure I do. 911 assist, you always want to make sure you turn that one on. And the reason why is because if the vehicle senses that there's a potential collision, it's going to automatically dial 911 for us. And then download contacts, yeah, we want to make sure we do that as well. And then we want to move to the top, and then we want to confirm our selection. As you can see there, we've got my recent calls, contacts, dial, dial pad, and a few other things. So it is nice to know that we've got the phone connected, and it really is that simple to be able to connect the phone as well. So as you can see there, we've got a few different options. We move into our mobile apps. We've got my Ford Pass app now. We've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app. So we can use the radio app directly through this screen. So without using Sirius XM, AM, FM, etc., we've got the flexibility to use some mobile apps directly through this middle screen, which I think is a nice touch, especially because there's not too much to this thing. We do at least still have a little bit of flexibility. Pressing this button along the very top gives us a few more options. So the very top, we can turn the display off if we want to. Just button press to turn it back. We've got our media on based off our Bluetooth stereo. We've got our Bluetooth connection there as well. So we can turn Bluetooth on or off. We can add a Bluetooth device. We can view devices as well. So we've got my phone there. We can disconnect it. We can remove or look at my device information. So if we go remove, let's remove it. And three, two, one, it is now fully disconnected. So it really is that simple adding a phone into this vehicle. And moving back, as you can see there, the phone is now disconnected. Moving down, my mobile apps are now disabled as well because I've removed it from the vehicle. We've got the basics for our clock, so mode. We've got our time there, so we can easily select what's going on with our time. And we've got our 24 hour mode, so if you prefer that military time, yes or no. So you've got a few options when it comes down to it. We've got our few different we've got our different languages there, so we can move between English, Spanish, or French if we want to. We've got our distance unit, so we've got our kilometers and liters per hundred. We've got our Celsius, about software licenses, and we can do a master reset. So if we're going to be selling the vehicle, we can do a complete master reset to bring it back to our factory defaults instead. Moving back again. And scrolling down, we've got our display, so we can adjust the brightness, and we can have it set to an auto mode, which means the vehicle is going to flip it between the daytime or the nighttime mode, depending on how bright it is outside. So, I mean, which one you go with is ultimately going to depend on you and which look you like the look of the most. So, I mean, up to you. But as I said, the vehicle is going to automatically determine what the vehicle is going to be. So whether it's in that day or nighttime mode, based off of the brightness. 911 assist, we can turn that one on or off. Ford Pass Connect, so the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, so we can use it as a hotspot for up to 10 devices. We do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to get that, but it is available there as an option. 
We've got our connectivity settings there as well. We've got our auto system updates, which I always recommend turning the auto system updates on. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses an update's available, it's automatically going to update the vehicle for us. Moving down, we've got our Wi-Fi connection, so definitely make sure automatic system updates on, Wi-Fi connected, you wanna make sure you connect to your Wi-Fi network at home, and then we've got a few other options there. Moving down, we've got our basics for voice control. The advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications. So if we go to change the station, it's not gonna confirm the station choice, make phone calls, things like that, so we've got a few different options. Phone confirmation, do you wanna call such and such person? And then the command list. When we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, this is the command list. So whether that shows up or not is gonna be a matter of preference. We've got our valet mode. So if we are going to be valet parking the vehicle or just for general security, we can enter in a four digit number in order to be able to lock the screen out. So people can't look through the screen, look through our previously saved phone calls and things like that as well, which definitely is a nice thing. And I believe, I think that was actually it. Moving down, oh, parking, a few more. So we've got our parking, so our rear camera delay. So as we go to put the vehicle in reverse, so actually speaking of which, let's throw the vehicle in reverse for a second. Like, look at this, look at this tiny little screen. Like we could technically zoom if we wanted to, but I mean, at the same time, so yeah, look at that. So we can kind of zoom in, but I mean, it's not, it's a tiny, tiny screen. So if you don't care about the technology, cool. But I mean, at the same time, it is pretty small, but it is nice to know that the backup camera at least shows up there. And the, as I mentioned, the rear view camera delay, when we actually go to shift it into reverse, is whether or not there's a delay in the actual camera. Rear occupant alert. So when we go to turn the vehicle off, we've also got this notification letting us know that we should check the back seats as well. We can close that out easily if we wanted to. And that's gonna be the basics of the actual sync media screen. As we start to move down a little bit, we can change between songs or radio stations, play or pause, we've got our basic back button, and then we've also got our sound settings. So we can change up the treble, mid-range bass, balance, fade, and a few other things. So a little bit of flexibility there, which is definitely a nice thing. Well, folks, that was a look at the media screen inside of the 2021 Escape S. What did you think? Pretty straightforward, pretty basic, but we still do at least have that Bluetooth capability. If you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. And until I see you next time, Take care.